All right, chapter one. Do not want the tips. Okay, cybersecurity and cyberterrorism. I'm going to cover this kind of quickly, but again, I do have multiple years of recordings up there. What happens if someone breaks into our system? What happens if someone takes over our 911 system? If anyone was at the summer, none of you were at the summer camp this weekend, were you? Shnoy was talking about how he went to Maryland and proved they could take over their entire new, brand new 911 system. And the way he proved it to him is he changed all the backgrounds on all the computers to the University of Tulsa. Proved that he got physical access to all the machines, were able to change all the backgrounds and everything. And they're like, no way. So if his students could do it, obviously other people could do it as well. Imagine what happens if you lose power or lose whatever. Okay, telephones, email. What happens if the internet goes down? Obviously, you can't run classes. You can't take classes if it's an online. There's a lot of stuff you can't do anymore. Okay, fact of fiction. This is 1997, exception of the plane crash. Basically, they proved that all this could happen. The, the NSA did everything but make it happen. They proved they got access to it. Like Chinois people got access to the 911 system. They did not take it offline. But they proved, and it's funny because he talks about how they did it. The way they got in was inside the program, there's a help menu. The help menu popped up a web browser that was unsecured. So they just modified that to connect to the command prompt, and they went in and just had full access to the system from that point. So it's just crazy that it was that easy to figure out. I think they did it within two hours with no prior knowledge to the system. All right, American, we are vulnerable. A lot of these figures are old, but try finding new ones. Trust me, they're very hard. Okay, we're an open society. We share everything. We put everything on social media. Everybody's doing. Our president tweets more than ever about everything going on. So, you know, it's just crazy. Okay, military spending. I updated it for 2014. This is the latest I could find. But look how much money we're spending in the military. I'm prior military. I'm glad they're spending money in it. But the point is, we spend a lot of money on that. Okay. Cyber attacks. China has been known to do this. Okay. And you'll see a picture right here. This was actually accidentally published on one of the websites where you can go in there and select a target and hit attack. And if you actually convert the, if you read that article right there, yeah, you literally can select the system and say, Attack and it just breaks into the system, kind of like Metasploit. Those of you taking security auditing, Metasploit breaks into systems. Totally uses exploits, so pretty amazing. The new Metasploit Pro, you can literally set it up to scan like your entire network every single day and exploit the systems automatically, just to so you know there's problems. We have updates every week. Why do we have updates? Because there's new problems every week. Are they being updated? Are they being fixed quick enough? So, it's kind of scary stuff. Everything's made in China, literally everything. And, yep, this flag, our baseballs, they even make snow. They literally make everything there now. Okay? I've seen it in East What now? <laughs> I've seen it in East Canada. Yep. There it is, they're making snow. But the point is, everything is made there. I was at a conference in Tampa where they, you know, when you go to a conference, they give away junk. Well, they gave away, I think I still been in my office, a little tape measure, post-it note, pen, this little combo thing you put on your belt. Made in Taiwan. Well, the NSA has given them out. I mean, that thing was pretty good size. Who knows what's hidden inside that thing? You don't know. Okay. All right. It says, why do people want to do this? Well, because we have money. Okay. So China looks at this and knows they need to raise their middle class by 50%. Because we have money here, we have information. The OPM breach. Y'all know what the OPM breach was? But three years ago now, because they stole my identity and they filed taxes in my name, they were saying that they were actually in our system for two full years before we caught them. Dr. Snow was talking about Stuxnet. Y'all know about that virus. Yes. That's written by the U.S. The U.S. and the Israelis were actually in Iran's nuclear system for four full years without being detected. Finally, the Israelis are like, this is boring. They don't even know we're messing with them. So they finally just took it up on it. But they went there for four years without being detected. So my point is, you know, I'm HBO. <laughs> That's been hacked how many times now? Three times in the last month, I think. So the point is, if you're not been broken into, 
It's either going to happen very soon or it's happening right now. You just don't realize it. Okay. Lots of cyber attacks. Insider is the number one biggest deal. I've, so I've been teaching here for 17 years full time. Could I be a bad guy? Potentially could be. Probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> the dark side. Exactly. I know the, I have access to the systems. Okay. Script kiddies, they don't know what the heck they're doing. They just download stuff and use. It's kind of like using Metasploit. Cool, I can exploit this. I don't know what it's doing, but I can use it. You know? Hackers, hacktivists. I mean, hacktivists, think about all the activ activities going on. What was the, I saw one today? Some hackers did something about a statue. I was just some article this afternoon, didn't read the whole thing. But organized crime, they use computers for everything. Competitors, watch the movie Paycheck with um, that guy in it. It was the name. It's an excellent movie. I refer to a lot of movies in my recordings. Um, cyber terrorism, hostile governments, and yes, the U.S. is considered hostile. We attack other people as well. Okay. Our government is vulnerable. They talk about some of the stuff ha happening here. It's just crazy. And again, these are old data, but you know, it's there's a lot more going on now. There's always breaches. The OPM breach is not even listed on here. Target didn't Target get attacked just again recently? Like. It's like, seriously? You know, I think I did the first time was actually through the uh, air conditioning system. The uh, contractor that took care of the air conditioning system had an unsecured remote access line into it, and they went from there. How about the gas stations lately? You see all the skimmers yeah, on gas stations lately? Yep, yep, yep. They're all over the place. I do audits of gas stations. I haven't found one yet. I tell you, every time I get gas, man, I grab that thing and shake it, look all around, and make sure it's really... Yeah, it $200 for gas. But a, this one right here, Sooner Road and I 40, that Circle K, it happened to them. And the employees supposedly check it every hour. Yeah, right. But, you know, <laughs> let me put it to you this way I've done thousands of gas station runs. I have never seen an employee check them once. I'm assuming they might at some point. But every I hour? Start, I but these terminals going to them? I mean, I don't know. I just <laughs> Those terminals actually connect straight out and make yeah. the charge. So, a lot of stuff. <laughs> iPhone jobs aren't coming back to the U.S. Now, Trump says they are, but now they're not. But, I mean, if you can make something for a quarter of the price in China, you know we're going to do it. It's the way it works. We need money. Okay. Cell phones. It says Android most worst platform for malware. 76% is on Android. I put some new figures on here. Here's some mobile threats. History versus 2013. Look at all those on Android compared to everybody else. Less than 1% is iPhone, Blackberry, Palm, and Windows all combined. Okay. Adoption rates. How quickly do people install updates? Hmm, they don't. <laughs> on uh, Android, because half the darn phones can't support it. You never guess what kind of phone I have. But uh, the problem is there's so many different devices for Android, it's hard to make one that works on everything. Where Apple, oh, they make their own device. People really, and I would bet half of them that don't do it is the government who can't update it yet, that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. And again, here's more mobile threats. Oh, that's the same one. Don't. Bottom blue, um, that's Java, I think. It's a version of Java. I uh, think. Java? Uh, the other is some. Okay. So which one's most secure, Windows or Android? Windows. Windows. This, I mean iPhone or Android. Mm -hmm. <laughs> iPhone is actually the winner, but there is a lot of different things to check. Now, what if I jailbreak my iPhone? Then I'm out there as well. The reason, the, not the reason, one of the reasons why mine is more secure is the Apple, how they check the apps. So, All right, cyber threats. We have internet, telephone, wireless, power grids, and there's so much stuff out there now. We have smart meters at home. I mean, what happens if they take them offline? Shinoi it was funny because he actually was going to um, Gizodan, another country over that way. Nigeria. Nigeria. By England. Uh, Norway. 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 Why can't I think of that name? <laughs> he was going to Norway to talk to him about their power grid, and while he was there, there was a big deal about power grid exploits. It's like crazy. 
Okay, there's uh, electronic art targets. They can really target anything. I was actually reading something this morning about printers. How uh, there's an expo where people are targeting printers now. How many people secure their printers? When's the last time you did an update on your printer? Exactly. You know, I'm very upset with the publisher of the book we use for our principal's book because they came out with a brand new edition. So a new edition textbook, should it have Internet of Things in it? Mm. It should. I mean, there's an entire set of viruses based upon it. One sentence. One sentence. And I about malware. There's like one little small paragraph on malware. And I, seriously, that's not important? So the I told the publisher I had an issue with this. And I got with the author. And I says, oh, that's just a fad. Internet of Things and malware will be gone very soon. Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> I said, well, okay, we're no longer using your book anymore, so we switched books. Nope. But, you know, it's just what are people after? Okay, People could be after people as well. We could, you know, target someone, get them to do whatever. Okay. Okay. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability is on every test, or in every class, pretty much. In every class, someone gets it wrong. Every class. Tabernacle Kelly says assets are available only to authorized parties. So I should not be letting Juan look at something that doesn't pertain to him. Okay? Integrity hasn't been changed. Your grades have not been adjusted up or down. And then availability. Is it availability? Is it available? Not avail is it available when needed? If the internet goes down right during enrollment time, what happens? Uh, was it last spring? Ooh, look, y'all ever use the app called uh, Call Protect from AT&T? It's amazing. It tells me exactly if it's a telemarketer or anything. It's great. I love them. But last spring, we had a snow day, I think. It wasn't a thing. We had one. That was right during the peak enrollment times. So the way Rose State solved it was they were going to give each VP a cell phone to take home. And they were going to be able to answer calls for enrollment with students. Called. Who do you think called in? How many of you called this special number they had set up? Nobody did. But So what did that do to our enrollment? Did we lose some students because they couldn't enroll because we were close for snow? I don't know. We'll never know. <laughs> did you not enroll? I don't know. But uh, availability is a big deal. Are you available when needed? Okay. Interruption. Again, all these are on your test. This section here and this class, they're all on here. Okay, interruption, asset is lost, unavailable, or unusable. Sometimes you connect to a website, it's not there. Okay. Connection is interrupted. Yeah, so, okay. Interception, the asset is accessed by an, on, in an auth unauthorized manner. Someone's listening in on it. Someone's copying down what you're saying. Someone's man in the middle type attack. Right. Modification, I love this one. Florida high school students modified probation officer's check-in number to a 900 sex line. 900 numbers are translated to a real number. The ex-cons called it, thought it was kind of funny, but they still got in, tr in trouble for not contacting the parole officer. So, I mean, they tried, but still, you didn't complete it. Right? So, is something been modified? Is it really what you're looking for? Or fabrication, it's not even real at all. It's a fake website. It's a fake whatever. But you need to know all of these. Okay. Here's some survey data. Again, trying to get these updates are killing us. But malware is a big deal. It's been going on for quite some time. Okay. But this is just all this stuff is out there. Financial fraud seems to be going down, but I think it's been going up since 2010. Again, I don't have the, the later da data. Okay. Instant messaging abuse? Man, there's a whole bunch of texting junk like that now. Okay, National Trends versus cyber criminality is becoming more advanced and targeted. They're hiring people that can do it. Russia has this major hack. There's a book out there called Spam It, S-P-A-M-I-T, written by um, Krebs. First name, Robert? Is it Robert? K-R-E-B-S is his last name. It's another really interesting book to read. I mean, some of the stuff they do is just amazing. He, he goes out after some of these these people that are using cyber to do it. But they want to give a phone call from pharmacies. I get them all the time from the world pharmacy. You know, like I showed you, I got that call protect on thing. I got a call the other day. I'm like, I know this is 
going to be a telemarketer. But I answered it anyway. So let me guess, are you the World Pharmacy, the Canadian Pharmacy, the U.S. Pharmacy, the Online Pharmacy? Give me some other weird name. No, we're your local pharmacy. No, you're not. Are one of the 112 different people calling about your possible student loan refund? Yeah. Yes. Oh. All right. The, that calls the stupid the thing is they figured out a way around the, the take us number off the call list because now they outsource the call. But the what's call happening is now outsourced and then they move back around towards the But when the you company. get this app on there, it checks through at t So if yeah. someone has reported it, it shows up as possible spam. What's that app again? Call Protect. At least it's on AT&T. I don't know if anybody else. It's totally free. Install it. I have not. Once in a while, I answer just to make sure. Every single time, it's been bogus. Every single time. There's some that automatically blocks don't even let it ring because it's 100% fraud. But all this other stuff, it's just amazing. Okay. Illegal use of internet for fraud. Just all kinds of different stuff's happening. Okay. Privacy, big deal. Stealing our identities. Okay. IT security is becoming more difficult because it's changing all the time. Okay. So there's many niches in IT security, but no coord core, there's a D, coordination. Problem is, we don't share what we're doing. We should be sharing what we're doing more, and we don't. Okay. Cyberspace is on the rise of the fifth domain of the armed forces. Yeah, it's Tinker is our cyber command now. So you can't live without IT. Can you, I mean, think about it. We all have internet at home. We all have cell phones. We all have everything. Okay. Vulnerabilities on PCs, I tried to get them. There's no new updated numbers. That's a lot of vulnerabilities on our PCs. Can I kick anything past 2012 on that one? Okay. It's just crazy amounts of vulnerabilities. Software, Adobe Flash. Did you see they're finally getting rid of Adobe Flash? Yeah. Even Adobe says they're getting rid of Adobe Flash. Thank God. It's about time. Okay. Uh, Oracle Java. It's funny. Bad name for Oracle, but they didn't really. They bought it, so it was kind of that way before they got it. Okay. Russ, what's your favorite web browser? Chrome. 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 Let's see. 2002. It was Internet Explorer. Still Internet Explorer in 2005. 2010. Ooh, looks like Firefox. 2011, Firefox. still Firefox. 2012, Chrome. 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 We think it's for 17. Oh, there's 13. Darn it. Still Chrome. 14. Still Chrome. 17. Chrome. By a massive <laughs> amount. Look at that. 76%. Oh my God. I mean, I got a friend of mine uses Safari. I'm like, 3% are using Safari? Isn't that crazy? Yeah, OS is taking. Look how many people are using Windows 10. I think that that number is so high because they're forcing it upon us. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's either Windows 10 or Windows 7. Oh I have God. Windows 10 in my office. You know, I got Windows 10 in my office. They put it there. No, they didn't. They didn't want me to have it because I'm literally like user number three on campus. The reason is in forensics last semester, I signed a project. <laughs> and everybody kept complaining. Wasn't what are you talking about? It works fine. No, it uh, really work doesn't work on Windows 10. <laughs> so like, Darn it, my bad. <laughs> so I said, I need to be able to see if this stuff works because I'm assigning projects that don't work anymore. So they gave it to me. Man, it took forever to get it to me. Yeah, Windows 10, big time there. Look at this. How about this? The mobile use is on the rise. How many of you use mainly just mobile devices? I mean, I use my computer for work, but at home, I probably use my phone more than my computer. If I do, like grading, yeah, it's more convenient to grade with a computer. But just checking my bank, it's so much easier to do on my phone. Facebook, all that stuff. Email is so much easier on a phone. Okay? Uh, I don't trust my phone to do. You probably have an Android phone. <laughs> oh, well, look at that. Imagine that. Got an Android there. I wouldn't trust it either. <laughs> Look at this right now. Global statistics from July 2017, 54% of traffic is on mobile now. So if you're a developer, a company, what would you be developing for? Mobile. Mobile. That's where it's going. Which browser would you be developing for? Chrome. Chrome. Now, does that mean you shouldn't care about Safari? 
No. no, but you know, I'm trying to get this working. It works great in every but Safari. Okay, fine. We're gonna let it go. I mean, still, you might want to get it to work, but don't spend too much time on it. Okay. Because yeah, it's only like a small thing to be able to do it. Yes. But I saw that like 54% of traffic is mobile. But I also now. Now you got, remember that you got to take into account that at work I'm forced to use the PC. But if you could take off the work traffic, that's a lot higher. Okay. So why do a cyber attack? Cheap, readily available, easy to launch, diversity, lots of different stuff we could do. Pure cyber attacks, we haven't really had any, okay, prior to 9-11. How about nukes, biological weapons? We know those are going on. We got North Korea getting ready to bomb us. I don't know if it's going to or not. We'll see. He's going to quote unquote bomb us. Blended attacks. I mean, we could have multiple things going on at the same time. Imagine an earthquake. Wind power's been taken down or whatever. Okay. Internet. Oops. Internet attacks. The SQL slammer worm took down all the um, phone system. And was, I think it was SQL slammer also took down a bunch of ATMs. So. All right. Let's talk about some managing of risk. Harm, it says, occurs when a threat is realized. Something happened. There was a vulnerability. It got exploited. Now we have harm. Okay? Risk is the potential. Okay, I haven't updated my antivirus since I bought the machine. Obviously, that's a risk. Okay? Harm is when it actually happened. What am I going to do to protect? Well, I'm going to put an antivirus. Or I'm going to put a firewall. I'm going to put a whatever on here. Let's, let's check this. See if I can see it. I don't know if I have the ability to see it. Um... Firewall. Okay, turn Windows features on. Uh, where's firewall? There it is, firewall. Windows firewall. Oh, it's turned off. Wait a minute. Okay. Is it off? Yeah, it is. Windows firewall's off. Good plan or not? Yeah. Well, the point is they're saying we're behind a firewall. But one of the largest problems is insiders. Insiders are inside. So we've gotten through the firewall because we're inside the network. Yeah, you know, it's an issue. All right. Okay, we have something called adequate protection. It says computer items must be protected until they lose their value. Okay. My mother-in-law is, is living with me. Oh, joy. <laughs> she has these two sewing machines, you know, the kind with the foot pedals and, you know, and then, it's funny. She ripped her pair of jeans the other day. I says, "You got so the darn things," but they've been sitting there in my garage, crap piled on top of them. You're obviously never going to use them, but they're antiques. Okay, let's do something. Sell them, or but you know, it's like, at what point do you stop protecting this PC, or you know, how much money you're spending on it? You know, I was in charge of. What's called the ADP, ADPE custodian, automated data processing equipment. Y'all remember those old IBM Selectric typewriters with the ball that would jump and type? Well, you young kids don't know what I'm talking about, but it cost like 3000 bucks a piece when they were bought. Well, once we started getting computers, what did we do with the typewriters? They got rid of them. Well, they didn't take them off the inventory. So they came to me one day and said, Where's all these typewriters? I'm like, I really have no idea. They're all gone. I'm like, Well, someone needs to pay for them. So finally, we got the kernel to approve them. There's no more value in them. <laughs> so, I mean, why are we going to try to find something that literally got thrown away because it has zero value? But it cost $3,000 back then. But today, now, I was talking to my friend up at Edmond. He's got this really old computer junk. He's like, I wonder if it's worth anything. I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> I, have a, I have a great example of that. Uh, back a couple years ago, we got our first Blu-ray uh, Blu-ray disc player. Mm -hmm. It was about seven hundred bucks. Wow! Just recently we got a new one because it's, it's like what forty nine bucks. Yeah, it was crap. Out of us. It was <laughs> yeah about about fifty bucks because the advancement in technology and it's just so common nowadays. But the parents won't throw away the old one then, or they will. No, they're just taking. Uh, okay. <laughs> we had like a because we all have like one of those. Uh, there you go. There you go. I need to I need to be able to play a Blu-ray on my machine. Is this Blu-ray in it? Darn it. I'm trying to convert all my movies to digital. I have some Blu-rays that 
Okay, so we got adequate protection, protect until we no longer need it. But get, these are on your test as well. Principles of effectiveness. Controls must be used and used properly. So I have a firewall. This turned on. It's probably not the most effective use of it. But an issue is a lot of people don't even know how to use these things. Like they'll get something at home and they don't know how to turn on, or they or they leave the default passwords or whatever. Okay. Principle of the weakest link. Security can be no stronger than its weakest link. You might have this awesome password, but if you write it down on a piece of paper, what good is it? Right next to a computer. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Okay. Uh, or behind the monitor. Or, or under the keyboard. Oh, there probably is. We'll see. No, none in this room. Okay. All right. Controls we can do encryption, which a lot of this class is about. You have software controls, hardware controls, physical controls, policies and procedures. All that stuff is important. So let's for, let's say we don't have one. We don't have physical controls. We forgot to pay the bill. We have no locks anymore. Well, people can just walk off of stuff, okay? What about there's no policy and procedures? Well, then people are going to leave blank passwords and all. It's funny. Um, I gave Jimmy a MacBook the other day because we had an extra one and he needed one. Well, I made him an account called Jimmy, and I left the password blank. So I didn't tell him. I just, he was there trying to, I can't get in. I can't figure out what you set the password to him. I get the blank. He's like, seriously? <laughs> I mean, yeah, the computer's blank. It literally just has the OS on it. So you, know, you can set your own password, which he did. But uh, he, he never guessed that because he never guessed I would leave it blank. But, I mean, there's nothing on there at this point. It's literally, you're going to log in and it's going to ask you to set it anyway. So, But policy procedures, are they updated? They don't get updated. Okay. I was reading, what was I reading? Somebody the other day had a clean desk policy, which is something I need. Clean desk doesn't mean your desk is physically, but it means sensitive data is put away before the end of the day. I have a cleaning crew in my office every single night. It's funny, the other day, I watched, I have a camera in my office as well. I see a guy, he's looking around, he's opening my drawer, she's looking through my desk. So I sent the recording over to our people that are in charge. I'm like, there you go, here's somebody. He didn't take nothing, but well, there's a guy in the math building that has a camera as well. Guy walked up to the camera, turned it sideways. Why would he even be doing that? We saw your face now. Yeah, so it's, it's crazy. All right, effectiveness. Uh, first of all, we need to know there's a problem. Okay, Awareness of the problem. If you don't know there's a problem, the OPM breach, we didn't know they are in there for two years. Okay, Likelihood is what's the odds someone's going to try to break in if we turn off the firewall? I guess all of you guys are good guys. No one's going to do it, but we have no firewall here. Overlapping controls. Maybe we have a lock on the outside of the building and a lock on the door. We have multiple things. And a password with a firewall. Okay. Review them every now and then. Okay. Technical challenges. Things change all the darn time. There's always a new version of everything. Okay. So theoretical limitations. There's things that it's kind of like Moore's Law. This thing is going to, you know, we're going to Basically, get computers twice as fast every 18 months. So you're telling me 18 months from now, things we know it's going to happen, but how can we prove that? Okay. And can we ever get completely secure? So how are we going to get this computer completely secure? What are we going to do to it? Unplug it. Unplug it, probably put it in a safe, in a watertight box. But I mean, at that point, we lose the whole availability thing. <laughs> I mean, what good is it when it's unplugged? We can't even use it. Okay. Laws. Policies, they're always playing catch-up. Like, what is the big deal going on right now? All these stupid monuments. Seriously. Yeah. Monuments have been fine. We're all, now, all of a sudden, we've got to tear it out. Every darn monument everywhere. Can change their names. Yeah, we're going to rename all these schools. So it's, they're talking about renaming these schools in Oklahoma. Oklahoma education has no money. We're broke. Yet we're going to come up with money to rename all of our schools. We can really afford the first name. I just think it's true. I'm from Connecticut, so I should be against this whole Confederate thing. I can't care less. It's a monument about... But the point is, things change. Politics. Yeah. Politics, law, policies, they always... We, we don't know about it. Then all of a sudden, something happened. Oh, now we're going to come up with policy to handle this, whatever it is. Okay? Look at the bottom one. Few K-12 through K through students are considering. 0.6% 
of six-year-old girls are interested in STEM fields. That's science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Point six percent. What are the rest doing? You know, I held three summer camps this weekend, but not this weekend. This summer, one lady down. You know, I paid teachers to come. And one of the teachers came, and I paid her four hundred and forty-one dollars. And when she wrote a critique, she goes, "I will be totally upfront with you. I came for the money." But now that I see what this is, I think there are ways I can. Do you think you could possibly talk about the Caesar cipher in a reading class? Sure you can. It's really basic encryption. Somebody can teach a kid. You know, we had a student in my summer camp. Um, can't think of her name. Gentry is the last name. Because of them. Melanie? Melinda? Okay. A girl. Okay. Has dyslexia. Can't read. So she dropped out of public school years ago. Has been homeschooled. She came to my summer camp and went to the cryptography section. That was the coolest thing in the world. Because it's all jumbled up anyway. She's now back in public school. She wants to go to college. She wants to go to Grand Street, Tulsa. So the point is once people realize, but the problem is how to get the word out. You know, I held a summer camp with nothing but, I mean, I had 10 kindergarten through second grade teachers. They all came up with ways to teach basic numbering theory, like binary numbers, to second graders and kindergartners. That was amazing. I was thrilled to death what they came up with. So the point is we need, I mean, Believe it or not, we've got quite a few women in this class. We don't normally have this many, which is good. Okay, Fewer professors. We have had an opening in cybersecurity for nearly two years now. It's still open today. I can't get anyone to apply. First of all, we don't pay any money. And the outside world pays a whole bunch more. And we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. And why do you want to come here to make nothing? Well, because, you know... I enjoy it because I like it once in a while when I get someone to actually learn something and gets a job. And this guy, he came in my office asking for a job. What was it? One day you had a job? Yeah. Just happened to be there right when they were looking for someone. And you are, are you working there now? Yeah. yeah. Literally came to my office the same exact time someone was looking for someone. Said, hey, I got this guy right here. Putting hard. <laughs> Government position even. It was, it was just a fluke. Does it normally happen that way? There's openings all over. Uh, a friend of mine just got... Just moved from uh, an SF group in Georgia or in uh, Colorado to Georgia, yeah. and he bought it home. He's like, "Finish your class, you have to take a certification. You've had a clearance for like eight years. It's so I'll pay you hundred grand." Bose oh. Allen Hamilton says they got fifteen openings right now for qualified people, but you know they need people with you know with a little bit of experience. So get a job at Dell making crap for a couple of years just to get started. <laughs> I mean, Dell, you can probably get hired. Okay, probably not today. <laughs> But you could probably get hired by tomorrow, okay? Because there's so many openings. Okay, defense in depth, technology, policies, humans. You know, we got Mary in the front office. Mary is the sweetest person you'll ever meet. But seriously, Mary really needs to retire. But she won't. She will literally be here until the day she dies. But the problem is, is she causing a security violation? I don't know. I, we've never seen her do anything wrong. But it makes you wonder. Is she, or we just haven't caught it yet? I, again, I use her as an example, but there's a lot of people like that. There's so many people on campus that never lock their machines. Even in this building, they don't lock their machines. I try to lock mine every time I walk away from the keyboard. Because Roy and them, if I don't, I'll come back in and I'll have like pink <laughs> unicorns on my desktop or who knows what. But what happens if you are back? What happens if I don't lock my machine and the cleaning crew comes in? And rather than going through my filing cabinet, he's going through my computer. I got grades. I got student information stored there. Who knows what they could do? Okay. This is Rose State's gym. This is a couple of years ago now. <laughs> Not quite under the keyboard, but it was close. Why did he put a lock? If he's going to put the password... Why did you lock it? I just walked into her and I'm like, are you serious? If you haven't used LastPass, you need to. LastPass, it's amazing. It's addictive, though. Because you get relied upon it, then you have to remember, oh, I don't know the darn password. LastPass does it all for me. But the good thing is now I can have 30 character passwords for pretty much everything. So... You know how LastPass, forget Mamingo, that's old now. 
get LastPass. Okay, that's the end of lecture one. Stop this.